If you think your vehicle might have a bad fuel rail pressure sensor, I wanted to go over some of the common symptoms, trouble codes, and how to tell if the sensor is actually going bad. What is the fuel rail pressure sensor? The fuel rail pressure sensor monitors the fuel pressure at the fuel rail and sends that data to the car's onboard computer. The computer uses this information to adjust how hard the fuel pump needs to work at any given time. Before these sensors were introduced, fuel pumps had to run at full power all the time, which wore them out faster. But with this sensor in place, the system can ease off the pump when it's not needed, like when the engine is idling. In that case, the fuel pump might only run at 15 to 20 percent, helping extend the pump's lifespan and improve overall efficiency. Symptoms of a bad fuel rail pressure sensor So, what are the signs that your fuel rail pressure sensor might be going bad? First off, you're probably going to see the check engine light come on. You might also notice that the engine is hard to start or that there's a loss in performance. It just doesn't respond like it used to. You may get poor fuel economy or the engine might start misfiring or running rough at idle. Basically, it'll feel like you're having a fuel-related issue similar to a failing fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter. That's because when the sensor goes bad, the onboard computer starts adjusting the fuel pump speed based on bad data, and that means the fuel pressure won't be right when the engine needs it. Common trouble codes. As far as codes go, anything in the P0190 to P0194 range is usually related to the fuel rail pressure sensor. For example, a P0193 means fuel rail pressure sensor circuit high input. If you see one of these codes, the next step is to troubleshoot the sensor and see if it's the actual problem or if something else is causing it. How to test a fuel rail pressure sensor. So how do you actually test to see if the fuel rail pressure sensor has gone bad? Well, the first thing you'll want to do is check the wiring going to the sensor. Make sure it's getting the right voltages and that there aren't any bad connections, shorts, or open circuits. Typically, the wiring for a fuel rail pressure sensor includes three wires. A power wire, a signal wire, and a ground. However, depending on the vehicle, the setup may vary. For example, take a 2005 Ford Focus. The fuel rail pressure sensor on that one has four wires instead of three. If you look at the wiring diagram, you'll see they added a temperature sensor inside the same unit, so pin 3 sends out a temperature signal. So before testing anything, it's a good idea to pull up the wiring diagram for your specific vehicle, just to be sure of what you're working with. But if it's a typical three-wire sensor, it should be pretty straightforward to test with a multimeter. For a three-wire sensor, you should have a power wire, typically 5 volts, a signal wire going to the onboard computer, and a ground wire. Be sure to verify each wire is intact and properly connected to ensure accurate readings from the sensor. Testing fuel pressure. If you've checked the wiring and confirmed that you're getting the correct voltages, the next step is to check the fuel pressure using a fuel pressure gauge. Attach the gauge to the fuel rail to measure the fuel pressure and compare it to the specifications for your vehicle. For instance, if your vehicle is supposed to run at 50 PSI, but the gauge shows 30 PSI, that's an indication of low fuel pressure. In a case like that, the problem might not be the sensor at all. It could point to something like a weak fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter. Final thoughts. To troubleshoot a potential fuel rail pressure sensor issue, checking both the wiring for proper voltage and verifying that the fuel pressure is within the expected range at the fuel rail are important steps. While some people may choose to simply replace the sensor to see if the code clears, it's important to remember that problems with the wiring, such as an open circuit, short, or poor connection, can cause the same symptoms as a bad sensor. So always ensure the wiring is in good condition before jumping to replace the sensor. And that's pretty much it. If you've got anything to add, drop a comment down below. If this video was helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and have a great day.